Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode of Don't Look Back Tober. We're going to be doing some horror themed Tuesdays all through the month of October, culminating in a finale um, where we run through some of the expansions I haven't played yet for Black Side Studios Don't Look Back. Now, if you haven't seen this game before, you go up here in the cards, check out the Let's Play. It is a horror themed solo and cooperative miniature game, basically recreating all of your favorite slasher and horror movies. Um, of the last like 40 years uh, and each one with a different theme. So I went through my collection of the expansions I haven't played through yet and I had three in particular that felt perfect for October and gave me like a themed sort of like way of doing Tuesdays uh, which I thought would be fun and different. It meant that I actually played through them because I hadn't played through them yet. Uh, we're gonna start with Attack of the Greys. One of my favorite TV shows growing up was of course The X-Files and one of my favorite movies was Fire in the Sky. Um, and I was obsessed with the idea that, you know, the truth was out there and that aliens were out there, you know, trying to, I don't know, <laughs> hunt us down or learn from us or whatever. Um, and this is a recreation of those kinds of events. Uh, there's a two mission sort of like set in this pack. You get three cool miniatures and some strange light tokens that replace all the fright tokens normally in Don't Look Back. So if you haven't seen the game before, check out the Let's Play up here in the cards. Um, and if you have, let's dive in with Attack of the Greys, the first of the expansions we'll be doing all month long on Tuesdays going through October. It is the Attack of the Greys, the alien abduction expansions. They're coming for you. It's a new killer expansion. So you get three alien res, uh, resident alien miniatures, rules and snare cheats, and the strange light tokens. And see, I've painted up my greys here. I did them less as little green men and more as greys. Um, painted up with some uh, Citadel Contrast. I think it's Basilicanum gray. Uh, highlighted up through like a lighter gray and then some glowy yellow eyes to go with it. Uh, and you get also, of course, these strange light tokens that I painted up to be like the, imagine like the stab lights on the ground moving around hunting for humans. Um, you get an actual like expansion for the rules. Now you replace all of the references to fright tokens, the rule book with the, um, the strange light tokens. So basically uh, there's no jump scares and whenever you would roll for a fright token, you roll on the strange light token instead. Uh, when playing attack, uh, you replace all the fright tokens and then you uh, use multiple killers, they will all move and then make all their attacks. So basically, three up to three greys can show up. You get their own visage. They have six wounds each. They can be driven off. When a grey is driven off, place a grey in the center of the closest strange light token, so the one just beams down. And then special actions, they come to observe and collect. When a grey moves, it will always stop an inch away from the target. If a grey is in contact with the target at the start of their killer phase, the grey moves two inches directly away instead of using their MO. Another ammo is stalking. Place the killer uh, six inches of the front arc of the character farthest from the center board in section A. The killer will move towards that character, and if there's a tie, the players can choose who goes. And they have two attacks. They don't actually kill you, really. They do mind control. Uh, the tar gray targets the closest standing character, supporting character within 10. In the case of a tie, players may choose. The target character moves immediately four inches directly towards the closest strange light token. This uh, movement can be affected by typical terrain. And then characters are supporting uh, characters in a light token may not be targeted by this attack. So basically, you go towards strange lights, and then if you are in strange lights, the great targets the closest character supporting character in contact with a strange light token. In the case of a tie, players can choose. The target is randomly placed D10 inches from its current location, so it staggers away. It trips, gains an injury, and gains a point of tear. So basically, they're trying to like drag you up into these lights. The lights are like whirlpools to pull you away. If no characters are in contact with a strange light token, use attack one instead. Greys may target the same character supporting character with both these attacks. Oh, they're hunting for you and trying to get you, and, and there are other traits that they're patient. You're minus two to your, um, uh, sorry, whispers rather, they're minus two to all your actions if you win six of them. And the killer will ignore supporting characters on a nine plus, because it knows who it wants. Uh, and then finally, we've got our actual like events. So we're going to do Lights in the Woods is the first one. The inspiration is evade and escape. You've been hiding from them for a couple days. Now you're out of food and water. You hear them over the ranger station radio and that an old military bunker might exist in the base of the hills of the south. After two days of hiking or driving, you're so close. The problem is, so are they. So you set up a woodland table with an old military base with a bunker to hide from the greys in over there. Um, you set up your uh, actual group. So I've chosen to use Max, Holden, Alice, and Seth. And they're gonna be holed up next to, of course, the broken down missing time um, truck, Holden's truck, which of course has been taking them to all their adventures. They'd be within four inches of this corner. Uh, strange lights token in the middles of B, C, and D. So we're going A, B, C, D this way, just because it's going to work better for on camera. Um, and there's 12 turns, uh, dense underbrush, section D. So this whole section over here is considered difficult terrain. Easy pickings when a character trips, immediately center a strange lights token under the character. And then swing away, Meryl, on turns 10, 11, and 12. Any attacks with a baseball bat, I'll crit on a one to five. So I had to take Max because he's got the bat. 
Uh, there's no lights in the table, although of course we could make one um, with Seth and then objective. At least two characters need to make it to the bunker by turn 12. Once a character makes in contact with the bunker, they're removed from playing considered to have escaped. And then of course the theme killer is the visitors. They came, they saw, they sampled, so they're stalking otherworldly whispers and patient. Right, and so turn one, do we roll for fright tokens on a 10 plus? No, all right, so we're safe for a turn. So that means everybody gets to move. So let's start as usual, um, I guess with Alice. Go with Seth. Seth's gonna move, he moves three. So he's gonna move through this first action and then three again with a second action or six total. I guess I could just go this way to here. Can be killers on the board yet, we can just go. Um, then we'll go with Holden, he can move four. So he's gonna walk eight, heading towards the military base. Then we'll go with Alice, and she can move five, which means she moves five for her first action. Now there are no jump scares here, so I don't have to worry about being next to terrain, and then five with her second action. Up to there. Max! Oh, I should've gone with Max first. I forgot I can move um, Alice for free because of Max's sweet abs. <laughs> Lock eight, up to here. Right, turn one's complete, no jump scares, because as usual, there's no actual killer in the woods, it's just aliens. Uh, so we're gonna turn two of a potential 12. Let's roll to see now, it's a six plus, to see if we get any stuff we do. All right, so we have to roll for our strange lights. So over here, one or two whispers, remove the strange light token, sweet. Uh, the one up there, seven, they're here. Replace the strange light token with a gray and move the gray using its uh, target rules under its MO. Placed by gray, and then I have to move them using their MO. So that's place the killer six inches out of the front arc of the character furthest from the center of board section A. So that would be you. He's gonna be six inches away, so back here. And then it moves its MO, but it stops an inch away. So it moves five. And stops an inch away from everybody. All right, and the final strange light token, six. Uh, it's, it's it's beautiful. Move the strange light token six inches towards the closest character. This one advances towards Alice, so it's gonna end up right there. Right, the killer phase. So it's gonna move two inches. It's not in base to base. So it actually, doesn't move two inches back. It just doesn't move, or it would go towards Holden. Um, then mind control. The gray targets the closest standing character, supporting character within ten. In the case of a tie, the players can choose. Target character immediately moves four inches towards the closest strange light token. Holden, he's just gonna walk towards it. Oh, there it is. And the gray targets the closest character, a sporting character in contact with a strange light token. Uh, there's nobody in contact, so that's it. So the killer's turn ends. All right, character turns. Well, that was terrible. Uh, there's a gray there, we don't like that. So I think Max goes. Ah, no, we'll go with Alice first, because we need somebody to get away here. So Alice is gonna encourage, I think, Holden. She's gonna move five. She wants to get the hell out of here. Then she's gonna move again. Head to here. He's gonna go. Uh, he really wants to move because he doesn't want to uh, to be within six of that guy <laughs> with his shotgun. Then he's gonna blast that gray. So he has a combat of 12. Um, he has an encouragement which means he's plus three, which gives him about 15. Try and hit that gray. Fright or anything on him, uh, and he's not within six for the minus two from the whispers. 19, he fails! <sighs> We're gonna spend a luck. We need to do this. We, we only have so much ammo, we only have two ammo. So spend a luck, down to one, we roll it. Three, we got him. D5 injuries, blam! Ah, you five! All right, it's got one health left. Long action, um, so the move was a quick action, then the range combat was in a Long action, yeah, and his awareness is eight, so he was still good. Yeah, I was actually still good. <laughs> Whoopsie. Eight. I feel like whole, uh, Max could actually finish this guy off now. So he's gonna walk four to get into base to base. And he's combat 10, so he's gonna make a melee action. Packs in base to base. He's minus two to this, unfortunately, though. His combat 10 goes to eight. Misses. I could luck it. I have two lucky outs, yeah, re-roll it. Yeah, we got him with a six. Uh, baseball that does three injuries. He gets moved back two inches, but he's taken out first. Bam! Swingway Merrill. Okay. It's just Seth. He gets to move three, and then three again. So he's just gonna go six. He has no fright on him, and there's no jump scares. Oh, with a gray. Unfortunately, when they're driven off, place the gray in the center of the closest strange light tokens. It just reappears up here. Turn three. All right, let's see what happens. We're going to have to roll on a five plus now. 
we don't. All right, so its ammo is to move towards us now, so it's gonna go D10, eight. So it just gets right to within one inch of Alice. And then it mind controls her. She has to move four inches towards the nearest strange light token. The pretty lights. And no abduction, because she's not in... Contact with a strange light token. All right, so the activation though, she is within four of a strange light token. She's gonna take a terror. And then she's gonna move. So she's gonna go five and be like, no thanks. Ah, sorry, first she's gonna encourage Holden again. She's gonna go five. She gets a free rah rah encourage action. And then she'll go five again. And almost make it, but I could trip on a one to, uh, basically on a one, because I have a terror token now. So do I roll a one? No, oh my god, that's cool. Alright, Holden's gonna go, he's just gonna walk his four, like so. And he's gonna blast that gray. Shotgun shot, yeah, it'll just reappear. Yeah, I think we'll just walk again. That's Seth, he's gonna go six, up to here. And then Max, Going up eight. And then it's turn four. So on a four plus, we have to roll four strange lights. We do. Token. That's a seven. They're here. Now another gray appears. Boom, 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 boom. That means next turn, two more strange lights arrive. Generate fright tokens. There's going to be one in the center of this zone and one in the center of this zone. Now it's the killer phase. All right, so this little guy, oh, sorry. So this little guy right here. Moves nine, so just stops an inch away. I controls Holden to go towards the nearest strange light token. He's gonna walk four this way. And then this guy does much the same. Oh, they're gonna abduct Holden, so he walks over to here. And they push Holden towards that strange light again. He's not in contact with it, at least. Actually, I think uh, M.O. would have actually had this one then get placed right there. So she would have, he'd be moving four back, and then she'd have moved four that way as well. When he first appears, he goes within six. Well, that's not great. Uh, we could move, I guess, five. Because uh, we can encourage 12, actually. So we can move five. Whoa, geez, back to here. We can encourage Holden within 12, and then we could leave the board. So Alice gets away. Oh, no, wait, this is a difficult terrain. Uh, which means from here she'd have moved two and a half, and then two and a half, and then two inches this way, and then two and a half. I forgot slowed down over here. Uh, so now, yeah, she encourages Holden, and then she moves two and a half again. I keep forgetting this part of the, the board is difficult terrain. Slows everything down. All right, well Holden can move two then, because now he's in this quadrant, and he's gonna try and shock it over here with the encouragement. So he's got one shotgun round left. He's got a combat of 12, goes down to 10, back up to 13 because of the encouragement. So 13 or less on that gray. Um, it's the wrong dice. <laughs> it's a hit. 13 exactly. D5 damage. Does three damage. That gray has three left. And then it's Seth's turn. He's gonna go three. And he's gonna go an inch and a half because he's in the zone now. Ugh. Go with. You, fella, you're gonna go in a base to base. So you're gonna go four, and then, I guess just four again. Five, it's a three plus now to see if we are rolling for these tokens. It is. This one over here, two, it goes away. The other one, six is, move the strange light token six towards the nearest character. Oh no. It's gonna go six inches towards Holden and end up right there. Killer phase. Uh, Holden's gonna end up going, getting mind control. Oh, sorry. First, actually, that gray moves. It actually moves towards you. And then you're not in the zone yet, so it mind controls you over to here, and then it abducts you. So the gray targets close character and sporting character in contact with a strange light token. Target randomly plays D10 inches towards current location and trips, gaining an injury and a point of terror. D10 in a random direction, so two inches this way. Ugh. The other one goes right next to Alice and then forces her to move. With mind control, she'll go two inches back because it's halved. Let's start with Alice. She's going to encourage, I think, oh, she's going to move her two and a half again, try and get towards this thing. And then she's going to move two and a half again. 
and then she's going to encourage Max. Max is going to take a step over to here. He's going to gain another fright in Strange Lights. And actually, so is Seth, because he's also within four of a Strange Light. And so is Holden, because it moved over last turn. He's going to stand up for one. Uh, and then I guess he could move. And then dig a. No, you'd have to do desperate action. You can't really do anything else. So there's not a lot of point in him actually doing that. It's better if he just walks, I think, to the edge of this. Stand up and then walk over to here. Oh no, he was over here because he got he got moved two inches, so four inches put him better at the edge of the middle of the zone. It's gonna go. Now is the time, I think. He's gonna place a light token right there. Oh, so he's gonna move first an inch and a half. He's gonna place a light token, and then he's gonna move an inch and a half again. He removes that turret when he comes into contact with it. So Holden's gonna move into contact with that light token that Seth made, and that'll make him one point braver. Six. Now it's a two plus. We do. So last time we have to roll to see if we roll for terror tokens or strange lights. So for this one, a three is, it's so beautiful. Move it six inches towards the next character. Right underneath Max now, unfortunately. And then it's killer phase. This one moves over to Max, stays an inch away. And then Max uh, gets teleported and trips and he gets an abduction token. Would have been a new strange light token actually here for where he tripped, which would also have been rolled for eight. They're here. Another gray shows up. There's actually three grays here now. All of them move first. This one goes over to here too. And then this one uh, goes towards Holden but doesn't enter the light. Make like attacks. So first, he gets teleported. Uh, he gets, sorry, uh, he gets moved because he's not already in contact. Then he gets teleported and he goes five inches this way and trips and takes an He's got two terror, or two fright rather, and an injury now. Um, and then the same thing happens. Uh, first, the closest character not in contact will go two because he's in difficult ground. And then he gets um, Max gets targeted by the abduction, which means he gets uh, teleported six inches over to here into the woods. Also tripped and takes a tear and injury. He has not a ton of injury left. Three out of his potential eight for terror. And then we flip all our light tokens at the end of the killer phase. So lights are off uh, and everybody gets to potentially move. Stands up, uh, he moves three to the edge of zone D and then he moves one and a half, going over this way. Uh, Max is just gonna keep going through the ground. He's gonna go two and then two more, going four towards the bunker. He's super jacked up right now. He might fall over because he has three. Actually, he only moves once because he was tripped. He does not roll over his terror tokens though. So he just moves two towards the bunker. Getting spooky. Everybody's getting freaked out. Uh, then I think we just leave <laughs> if we can. We're gonna go two and then four with Holden to there. And then uh, we're gonna go two and a half and leave with Alice and just be like, bye. I need Holden to get out. I need everybody else to maybe die. Uh, I don't know if anybody else is gonna get away. So we're rolling automatically for tokens now. So for this last token, two, it just goes away. That means we place two new ones here and here because there's no tokens to start of the fright phase. And that means that now the grays go. Starting with you, uh, they all move. So this guy, and just stops an inch away from Seth. The other one stops an inch away from Seth. This last one goes over and stops an inch away from Holden. So, MO1, they mind control Seth. So he's gonna move an inch and a half with the first one until he's over the line. Then he's gonna move three inches towards this light. Holden's just gonna have to move, uh, I guess, two and then two again towards this light. Actually, no, it would just be two because it's still halved. Nobody tripped. <laughs> so, Max. Get out of here. You've got, you're okay still. So you're gonna go two and then four. Actually, sorry, and this flips, which pushes him outside of the light token. So he's gonna go two and then four. Go with Holden. Uh, he does not have enough terror on him, so he's good. He's gonna go two and four and leave, which means we complete the objective, even though he's all jacked up. Seth is gonna go, I guess, three to the middle again, and then an inch and a half like meow, and he's gonna put light on himself. 
Turn eight. All right, so for this one, what happens? Because we're rolling on Macri now, four. It moves six inches towards Seth, which is not great. And the lights are gonna be off actually in a minute, which means he's gonna activate and get a bunch of terror. Uh, then we roll for the other one. I think it's on, unless it goes away, it's automatically a six, yeah, because there's three grays down now. It's gonna move six towards Seth as well. Then all the <laughs> grays go. So the first one goes over to here. Mm, doesn't enter the light. The second one goes over to here. The last one goes over to here and doesn't enter the light. And then they start acting. Uh, so these ones will mind control Seth. Uh, he's gonna move four inches and it's half for difficult terrain, so it's two inches. And then he's gonna move two inches again. So he's gonna have four total. He's gonna take an injury because he moved through the killer. Doing great. <laughs> um, then he's not in contact with anything, so it doesn't do anything that way. Uh, and then he's gonna get moved two because he's in difficult terrain. And it's Seth's turn, I guess, first. He's just gonna move an inch and a half. I'll move three inches total. Just move, move. Try to get towards stuff. And then if we go four, we don't quite make it. Oh, you're so close. And all of these have flipped at the end of the freight phase. Definitely gained a tear from being next to that strange light and it serves activation. Nine, we're almost done. It's almost turn 12. Uh, rolling for strange lights, this one right here. Two, goes away. And then this one right here. Uh, six, it's gonna move directly towards Seth and just be underneath him. It's bad. <laughs> um, everybody converges on Seth. So it moves one. The next one moves one. The last one, I think Seth's getting abducted, moves nine <laughs> over to here. And then this one abducts him and pushes him six inches this way. And then he gets knocked down. Another injury and another tear. No one's in base contact with anything, so everybody else does. Oh, sorry, it would have been MO1. And then this one would do MO1, which would move him two inches. And then not be able to do MO2. And then he would move him again, MO1. And then MO2, he'd teleport again and go one inch this way and still be in contact. And then get knocked down and abducted. Tripped over here. So there's another strange light that got placed when that happened. And then he tripped over here again because he technically trips twice, and that makes another one. Lights flip, back to on, although we're not in contact with them. <laughs> and then Seth is like massively frightened now, minus four to all of his rolls. So he just moves uh, three inches into this light and removes one terror. Wouldn't make that actually because he had to stand up first. <laughs> so he's just gonna uh, keep the terror and move once. You're leaving. <laughs> You're out of here, Max. Turn 10. One for the strange lights. I don't think Seth's getting away. Uh, the first one just moves into contact with him. The second one uh, moves into contact with him. The last one moves into contact with him. Moves. Doesn't really matter what I roll here. The first one moves him into contact with it, then teleports him <laughs> two inches this way. And he knocks down and takes an injury. So he's, he's going to take three more injuries and be at eight. Uh, and three more terror, which will put him at eight terror, which almost kills him. Second one moves him back into contact with him and teleports it again. Five inches this way now. And the last one moves him back into contact with it and teleports him three inches this way. And then he activates next to three more and goes to two, four, six, eight, ten, no, nine terror. Oh. Nine terror and seven injuries is bad. Uh, I guess we could just move, we stand up for one and then we don't quite make it an inch and a half into this. Oh, these have flipped too, which is bad. Oh, we use our last battery and we just move an inch and a half and place that under ourselves. It then moves, so we can remove a terror point at least. Spend one of our two luck to remove two injuries. 11. I don't think you're making it out, Seth. I think you're gonna die. I don't think you're gonna make it to the next adventure. Um, so the... First of the strange lights, uh, it disappears. Oh, and he tripped, so two more strange lights actually arrived. I should have mentioned, or three more. Uh, the second one moves towards him, the third one moves towards him, the fourth one moves towards him, the fifth one moves towards him. So they actually all disappear because they all hit the light that he's standing in. Start of the fright phase, two more appear because all of those got sucked into the light, which is a neat trick for getting rid of them because they act like fright tokens. And these guys go, they don't enter the light. They all just moved within an inch of him, but kind of no matter what they roll. 
uh, and they all start moving him. <laughs> so he ends up moving three because he's out of the difficult terrain now. And then one more. Then these guy, next guy moves him four. And the last guy moves him four again into contact with that. Also zaps him, so he gets placed D10 away in random direction. Five inches this way, and he trips and takes an injury at Terror. At the start of the activation, he's back to nine Terror, which means he succumbs to Terror, and Seth is abducted. Dun, dun, dun. That one escalates quickly, holy moly. Um, the difficult terrain in zone D, and of course, the three grays. I need to save my batteries there um, to try and like soak them all up, but once these guys gang up on somebody, there is almost no chance of not getting abducted, and the automatically piling up Terror and damage. You're just too slow, buddy. We, we thought you might not get away, so you're not going to the next adventure, but Holden got away, Alice got away, and Max the Abs got away. So they're hanging out uh, on turn 11 in the bunker. Uh, we managed to get three out of four off the table for the first episode of Attack of the Greys, which is Light in the Woods. So we got the first episode of Don't Look Back Tober done it on the books. The teenagers escaping to the military bunker um, as they basically fled the abduction of all the aliens uh, through the woods as their car broke down. Missing time, but we lost Seth, which means we'll have a new, um, I guess, like survivor, new character arrive uh, for the next uh, adventure, which is the crash site as we basically seek some knowledge or some kind of weapon or power over these aliens, try and stop their malevolent force and fire in the sky. So let's see you for that next week. Till then, Ash, have a good one. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games already recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look to the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.